reading of our sermon text this morning. It's the epistle. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. If you'd like to read along with me in the Pew Bible, that would be on page 233 of the Newer Testament. 1 Peter chapter 2. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, that stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people. But now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, come to us. Touch us. Change us, challenge us, speak to us through your word and through this imperfect vessel. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. probably would have gotten me a failing grade in my preaching class at seminary. I'm going to let you see uh, behind the curtain, as they say. I don't pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. No. Here we go behind the curtain. I wrote this sermon, believe it or not, I mean, you may have thought I was preparing for the rapture, but I actually wrote this sermon. <laughs> that wasn't kind, was it? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you meant but I wrote this sermon, and it was, it was hard to write, and I couldn't figure out why, and I, I came to the conclusion that it was not really what the text was about. It's a very fine sermon, if I do say so myself. It's a fine sermon, it's smart, and it, it's like, it reads like a, a, a lecture, and so I'm not going to preach it. Um, so that's the part you're not supposed to know. See, I should have just jumped in. But it seems to me it's important because of, of what I preached the last time I was here a couple of weeks ago before I went to, to Missouri. What I preached the last time I was here about wanting to connect head and heart. It's important that you know that because that sermon that I wrote was all in my head. It was all about ideas. But this text is about the heart. 
It's about babies and buildings. That part is true. And you may think I'm crazy, but that's what it's about. You may say, oh, Tommy's gone around the bend. He's off his nut, he is. But it really is about the babies and buildings. And those are not simply issues for the head. The situation in Asia Minor, where the audience for this letter lived, was difficult. They were persecuted. They were hurt. They were afraid. They were lost. They didn't know what was going on, and they, they felt alone. And so this author, who tradition tells us was Peter, this author writes to them and, and gives them hope. Not, he doesn't give them an idea. He doesn't give them something to wrap their heads around. He gives them something to touch their hearts and to encourage their hearts. He tells them to put away from themselves all of these, these nasty ideas, these, these nasty practices, insincerity, guile, and, 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 and all, everything that, that tears down community, that builds walls between people. He says, get rid of those things. And be like babies. Be like babies. Not in the sense that they need to be immature or that they need to think of themselves as newborn. But what do babies do? They trust. Without question. They trust. And, and they, they survive on mother's milk. Nothing else. They don't need solid food. They don't need uh, a balanced diet. They get what they need in one place. And they grow. They grow. It, it, it's, it's built into them. This is what happens. And when it doesn't happen, we know that something's wrong. So babies, babies take in what they need and they grow. And that's the way these people in, in Asia Minor are to be, says this author. Long for, hunger for, pure spiritual milk. And that word that, that is in the New Revised Translation is translated as pure is actually guileless. So where he had said, put away, in the first verse, put away guile. He says, be guileless and then long for this guileless spiritual nourishment. And what is the source of that nourishment? God. He says, desire that hunger for that guileless, pure, spiritual, logical. It's another way for, uh, to, 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 to understand that. That logical milk, that logical nourishment that comes from God so that you can grow into your salvation. But there's a condition. Right? If indeed you have tasted the goodness of the Lord. And where do we taste the goodness of the Lord at the table. If that table, that, that fellowship, that community, that communion means anything to you, if you understand it, then you're going to be like the babies and you're going you're gonna to take and, and hunger for what you need from the hand of God. And God is there offering it freely, without condition. Babies grow. They eat. They grow. Buildings, not so much. But the example for the, the, the Asian Christians is Jesus, who the, the, the author calls a living stone. One that the that human beings rejected, one that, that God chose. 
And he says, then it, you, you come like this living stone and you allow God to build you. You don't build yourselves, he says. You allow God to build you into a spiritual house. You allow God to work in your lives to transform you, to change you into a building, metaphorically, a building in which God lives. And he uses all these, these, these dualistic categories. Right? Saved, unsaved, belief, unbelief, in, out, us, them. And he's doing that because these people are persecuted and they need to know that, that, that God is on their side. <coughs> that God has chosen them. Those, those categories in, in a way, they don't really mean anything to us because we never get to decide those things. We never get to decide for anyone else who is in, who is out, who is us, who is them. And though that, again, that's God's work. All we can do is put ourselves into God's care and allow God to build us up into the kind of building that God wants us to do. And the writer says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. The tendency is for us then to see that as a kind of privilege. To see those, the, those categories there as a way of saying that, that, that somehow we are better. But that isn't what the, the author is saying, and I'm not sure that, that the, uh, the people of Asia Minor would have taken it that way. What he's really saying is, God has made you these things so that you can give glory to God. So that you can know who you are and then take that, that message of God's gifting out into the world. So that you can know what God has done for you and you can tell others about it. It is not a privilege to be among the elect. It is not a privilege to call ourselves chosen. It is not a privilege to say that we are a royal priesthood. It is not a privilege to say that we are God's own people, it is a responsibility. It means that we have something to do. And to do that, we need to know in our hearts, not in our heads, we need to know in our hearts who we are and whose we are. So the author concludes this text by saying the same thing twice, doesn't he? <clears throat> Once you were not a people, now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. That's the same thing. Those two statements are the same thing. He, re he repeats himself to drive that point home, I think. Know in your hearts, you are God's people, you have received mercy. But who has received mercy? Anyone and everyone who asks. Because God offers mercy freely to all. Anyone who would accept can receive. 
Anyone who asks, as the text in John said, will receive. The question for us then is not a matter of categories. It's not a matter of making decisions about who's on which side of the wall, whatever wall that we, we, we think is out there. The question is, can we be like babies? Can we hunger for the nourishment that God offers us? Not logic. We're not asking for knowledge. We're asking for sustenance. We're asking for growth as individuals and as a community. We're asking for life to bubble up within us, to fill us, to spill out of us. Can we do that? Can we be babies? Babies don't think about what they need. They just take what they need. And that kind of nourishment God offers to us all. Can we be like babies? And can we be God's building? Can we be living stones that God knits together and builds up into a spiritual house? Can we give ourselves so totally into the care and, 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 and the attention of God that we become God's dwelling place. Can we do that? Are we willing to do that? Do we want to do that? And don't answer too quickly. Because if we want to do that, if we're willing to give ourselves into that kind of relationship with God, then God will use us to accomplish God's will, to fulfill God's vision, to bring to maturity and completeness and fullness all that God desires for the world. God will use us. And it's a matter, not, again, not of knowledge in our heads, but of knowing in our hearts. It is a matter of being transformed in the cores of our being. It is a matter of, 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 of allowing God to transform us, to change us, and to complete us in a way that we can't complete ourselves. Buildings and babies. They don't grow themselves. But the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the power of God, the life of God, the joy of God is in us to accomplish the kind of growth that we need. Always. Our heads hardly come into play. God changes the heart so that we can be the people God calls us to be. Let us pray. God, come Live in us. Live through us. So that we may live into our own salvation. So that we may embody all that you do in us in this world. <coughs> Speak to us. Transform us by your power and your grace. In the name of Jesus Messiah, we pray. Amen.